If two shapes congruent, that means they're exactly the same. So all the sides are the same and all the angles are the same. These three triangles here are congruent because they're identical shapes. They've just been rotated around. So congruent means they're exactly the same shape. To tell if triangles are congruent, we need to meet one of these four criteria. So we can have ASA. That's an angle. A side in between. So angle, side, and an angle on the other side. Angle, side, angle. This is congruent because if these, angle, these angles are set, they can only meet at one point. So it's congruent. Anything with this angle, side, angle will be congruent. Side, angle, side. So if you've got an angle here, and you know the lengths of these two sides, there's only one way you can make a triangle by joining these up. So if we've got side, angle, side, then we've got congruence. If the side angle side is the same for two triangles, that means they must be congruent. Side, side, side. So if we know all three sides, there's only one way to make a triangle. They have to join up. So if we've got side, side, side for two triangles, that means they're congruent. If we've got the same side, side, side. And this is right angle, a right angle, and the hypotenuse and one other side. So if we've got a hypotenuse on one side, we can work out the other side using Pythagoras, but um, that means that we've got congruence. So we've got the right angle, the hypotenuse and one other side. So whenever we're asked to prove that two things are congruent, we've got to get to one of these four reasons. So angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, 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 or right angle hypotenuse and another side. So anything else isn't a rule of congruence. So angle, angle, angle isn't congruence because one could be bigger than the other one. So we have to get to prove that two triangles are congruent. We have to get to one of these four reasons. OK, so here we've got a question. We've got an equilateral triangle. AD is perpendicular, so it means it's a 90 degree angle to BC. And we've got to prove that these two triangles, so these two triangles, are congruent. So, well, we can say we have to, we can get to any of these. We could do right angle hypotenuse on the other side, or either of these. So let's, um, and then let's just start reading off some reasons. So whenever we do this, we've got to give reasons for every stage. So AD is common to both triangles. So AD, they've both got this length, AD. Then we could say it's uh, because it's an equilateral triangle, AB is equal to AC because it's an equilateral triangle. And all lengths of an equilateral triangle are the same. So we've got this one is equal to this one. And now we've proved they're congruent because we've got a right angle, the right angle here and here, right angle, a hypotenuse, which is AC or AB, and one other side. So let's put ADC and ADB are both 90 degrees here. So the two triangles ABD and ACD are congruent because of RHS. And that's the answer. OK, here's another question. So ABCD is a parallelogram. Prove that triangle ABC and triangle ACD are congruent. So to do this one, we're going to have to use what we know about parallelograms. So we can say AB equals DC because they're opposite angles and the opposite sides in a parallelogram. So opposite sides in a parallelogram are equal. And 
We can also say the same for AD and BC. So AD equals BC because of the same reason. I'm not going to write it out again. I would in an exam, but I'm not uh, for this one here. And then oh, I've got options. So I can say AC is common. So we've got side, side, side. AC is common to both triangles. Therefore, they're congruent because we've got side, side, side. I could have also used the fact that this angle here, ADC, is equal to ABC, and I could have gone side, angle, side.